Hello, this short video is on the executive branch and how it influences public policy. Please make sure that you are turned to the correct page in your resource book and we'll get started. So at the top it says that this is about how the chief executive interacts with the legislators, the executive departments and agencies, and citizens to influence lawmaking. Now notice the key part about this is the idea of law making. It's the job of the president to carry out the laws, to see that those laws are enforced. He doesn't have the power to make the laws, so he has to work with others in order to get them to make the laws that he wants. Now keep in mind as we're going through all of this, our um, our key vocab term here is public policy. As we've mentioned before, public policy is the course of action that the government takes in response to an issue or problem that's facing the country. How is the government trying to solve this issue, this problem? How is it trying to make things better? That is public policy. What we'll find is that there are really four major ways that the president and the governor as well, because we're going to be looking at both national and state, le state levels here, basically there are four ways that the president and the governor can influence public policy. And they're listed down the side here, four different ways. Proposing legislation in an annual speech to the legislature, appealing directly to the people, approving or vetoing legislation, and appointing officials who carry out the laws. As we go through this, you're going to notice that there's a lot of, of similarities between the president influencing public policy and the presidential hats that we just uh, discussed, the different roles that the president has. You're also going to notice a lot of checks and balances that we've talked about before. So keep all these things in mind. All right, let's take a look at the first one. Proposing legislation in an annual speech to the legislature. What are the essential details here? Well, what we have is a State of the Union address, if it's from the President, or a State of the Commonwealth address, if it's the Governor of Virginia, is used to describe his administration's goals for the upcoming year. So the President or the Governor usually gives this once a year, and it's usually a time when the president or governor will talk about things that have happened to the state off or country, usually good things, but he'll also talk about the challenges that are facing the state or the country. And he's going to lay out his public policy, his goals, how does he want to see his, um, how does he want to solve these problems? How does his administration want to do that? So, in this case, this is exactly like the hat of chief legislature, chief legislator that we talked about earlier, where the president proposes laws in the State of the Union address. So actually, if you wanted to, off to the side here, you could put in something that says chief legislator. So. I'm just going to do that now. I'm going to just write in up here. I'm going to put in a CL to remind myself that this is chief legislator. Actually, I think I'll put that off to the side here. It might make more sense there as well. Sorry about that. So I'll just put chief legislator there to remind myself that that's the president as acting as chief legislator. And we'll find that at the state level, the governor is the chief legislator at the state as well. Okay, second one, appealing directly to the people. In this case, we've got the president and the governor realizing, you know what, I might not be able to convince all the members of Congress to go along with my ideas. I might not be able to convince them to to do what I want them to do simply because I'm the president. So there's another way that I can influence them 
and that's appealing directly to the people. So occasionally the president or the governor may make a televised speech, it could be a radio speech, but usually televised is what he does if he really wants to get the point across in hopes that his constituents, the people that he represents, will contact their representatives and ask them to vote for the new legislation. We, we've seen the president do a lot of this lately uh, as he's been working with Congress and the fiscal cliff where he's gone around the country talking to the common people, talking and trying to get support for his ideas as far as how to solve some of our fiscal cliff problems. He's been going to the common person, trying to get them to see his point of view in the hopes that then these individuals will contact their representatives to, and ask them to support the president's plan. It's another way that the president can try and influence public policy. The next way is approving or vetoing legislation. And I'm going to write over here, I'm going to write in chief legislator again because this is going to sound very similar to the president's role as chief legislator. So what we see is the chief executive can shape policy by approving laws with which he agrees and vetoing laws that he does not want passed. He can also call special sessions of Congress and the general or the general assembly if it's the governor. So obviously if the president doesn't like a law, he's going to veto it. If he likes it, he's going to improve it. But the idea here is that the president is going to shape public policy based on what he likes and what he doesn't like. In addition to this being the president's role as chief legislator, we also see one of some of the checks and balances here. Earlier, we said that two of the checks and balances, two of the checks that the president has on Congress is the ability, is the ability to veto laws and also the ability to call special sessions. A special session is a time where the president says, hey, we're in a serious situation. Here's what we need to have happen. You guys need to come to Washington. We need to work together, and we're not going to leave until we have figured stuff out. So those are powers that the president has. There are ways that he can check the powers of Congress, and there are also ways that he works in his role of chief legislator. The final way that the president can influence public policy is a little different from the previous ones. When we were looking at proposing legislation in annual speech, appealing directly to the people, and approving or vetoing legislation, we're really looking at the president interacting with Congress, interacting with and figuring out what laws are made. The president has a fourth way that's not directly dealing with making laws, but is instead with looking at how to carry out those laws. And what we find is that this is largely in his role as chief executive. So I'm going to write chief executive underneath the last one, which is appointing officials who carry out the laws. And here's what we've got. We've got that the chief executive can appoint cabinet officials, judges, and other officials who feel the same way about many important issues. He can thus further his and his party's legislative agenda. So in some ways we also see chief of party at work here as well. But the idea is that Congress can pass a law and then they can give it to the president to carry out that law, but whereas one president might go and carry out, want to see it carried out in a very conservative way, another president might want to see it carried out in a more liberal way. So that's why it really, uh, it's really a big deal based on who the president appoints, because who the president appoints is really going to determine how that law is carried out. All right, so what is the big idea behind all of this? Well, the big idea behind all this is that while members of the executive branch may not actually make the laws, they are heavily involved in shaping public policy and getting new laws passed.
Thanks for listening.